Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Hannah and this is Jar of Fireflies. Here I make videos all about my life as an Orthodox Jewish homeschooling mother of four. And today I will be talking all about our private home library. All right, so if you've been around my channel even for a short while, you know that I have been working on organizing the thousand some odd books that we have here in this room. This is our homeschool classroom area space. Yes, we homeschool everywhere, but we do have this dedicated space to keep all of our stuff, including all of our books. And we had definitely gotten to a point where there were so many books that I really needed to know exactly what we had, even out on the go. So I wanted to computerize everything. And it also was really overwhelming for the kids to reshelve books because I knew where they went, but they didn't. So I decided to color code all of the books. Anyways, this kind of led to turning this into a straight up library, which we are now lending out to people in our community, which is amazing and fun. And I am going to get to all of that. I will include chapters down in the description box below so you'll be able to click to where you want to go in the video if you're only looking for certain information about this, but I'm gonna kind of cover everything today. Okay, so as I said, we have a little bit over 1,000 books here in our library, and the first thing I wanted to cover is how did we get all these books? All right, so first of all, I have been collecting books for a very long time. There are literally books on these shelves behind me that I read when I was a kid, like yes, the exact copies. Also, because we are homeschoolers, a lot of these books came as part of curriculums that we purchased. We've always been a very literature-based homeschool family, so there's always been just a lot of really good literature as part of the curriculums or courses that we have chosen to participate in. And so those books naturally end up here when we are done with them. And we end up rereading a lot of them because they are such good books. Another way that we have gotten books is that we have been gifted a lot of these books, which is absolutely fantastic and wonderful. I will ask for books that I want for the kids as presents for myself because, hey, I also like to read them too. And then just as a family, we have been gifted a lot of books as well because people know that we love to read. And then probably the number one source of books here in the library the past couple of years, at least for sure, has been from our friends of the library sale. The libraries in our community always have like a few shelves of books kind of out in the front before you get into the actual library space. And then you can just go up there, look at the shelves and I think the paperbacks are a dollar, hardcovers are two dollars. So it's really easy just to walk over there. They tend to have all of the classics in one section and all the kids books in another. And that's really where I end up going is those two spaces. I have got amazing books there. I have gotten beautiful hardcovers of the Iliad and the Odyssey. I've gotten Newbery Award winning books, uh, just really amazing books, uh, incredible wordless picture books. Like I cannot even believe what these libraries are giving away. Which leads me to my next point. Why did we even make a library in our house? There's books at the library that we could go to. Okay, libraries just aren't what they were when I was a kid. First of all, the books have changed over time. I don't think the quality of literature is as high. It's too easy to walk in and get just really mediocre books or what Charlotte Mason would call twaddle. Just the books just aren't as good. So I wanted to make sure that I had really good quality books here in our home, ranging from picture books all the way up to like Jane Austen and stuff like that. Also at our libraries, they have things like iPads, big touch screens for the kids to play with, computers for the kids to play on, whole play centers set up with, you know, play kitchens and houses and foods and puppet theaters and all kinds of things like that. So when we go to the library, those are generally where my kids end up wanting to go. They want to go play on the stuff and they're not paying attention to the books. And then of course, I just wanted all of these books around in the house because we are creating in our home a culture of love for literature, a culture for love of learning and knowledge. And the best way to do that is to make sure you have a house of books and that we're reading together and that they see me reading on my own also. Okay, so let's jump back a little bit and let's talk about this color coding system. On each of my books, I put a small sticker. I bought these sticker sheets off of Amazon. I'll include links to everything that I talk about down in the description box below for you guys. They're not affiliate links or anything like that. Just trying to help you guys out if you're looking to do something similar at your house. And so what I did is I categorized all of my books by subject or for fiction. I also 
categorize those by time period. And I assigned a color to each of those books. And I put that little color sticker here on the side. And then I got these. I don't know if you can even see, it's like a clear sticker. And so this sticker goes on, I think you can kind of see it there. It goes around to make sure that that stays on and help to protect that sticker so that it's not falling off. Cause otherwise I have discovered that they will. It, this is what makes it easy for my kids to now reshelve books. So if one of my kids takes this book off of the shelf to go read, He'll go read it, he'll bring it back, he'll look for that same color on the shelves. It doesn't have to go in the same spot. I'm not worried about alphabetical order or anything like that. I just care that they get back in the same general vicinity that it came from, which is on that section of that color. And it's done. And I have to tell you, the way that my books look right now, like it looks so perfect. It looks like I just organized them all, but I didn't. They've actually stayed this way since I did the color coding system because now it is so easy for the kids to put the books back. Even when my toddler comes and unshelves like whole shelves of books at the same time. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is flip the camera around and show you all of my bookshelves and show you exactly what categories I chose for my books. All right, so starting out up here at the very top, those are kind of like my homeschool mama books. And then on this shelf right here, I've got mythology books. And then that jumps over here into fairy tales. Coming down here onto this next shelf, I've got my poetry section, and then we come into fiction. So my first fiction section is 1640 to 1739, and then the next fiction section is 1740 to 1836. Coming down to the next shelf, we jump down to 1839 to 1900, and then from 1901 to 1960, and then that continues down here on this next shelf and a little bit down on the next one, which you can see a toddler did get to before we jump into 1960 up to the year 2000. And then that continues down there on the bottom shelf. Coming back up here to this next shelf, I have all of my 21st century fiction and that goes all the way down on that entire bookshelf. Coming over here, this top shelf is biography. And then I start over here, the black stickers are skills and the rest of those are down here. I kind of started running out of space pretty quickly there. Over here is a reference section and that also includes foreign language books. And then down here on the bottom, I start picture books and those continue all along the bottom here as well. Right above those, I've got story anthologies and then we've got science books that come up onto the top shelf as well. Coming over here, I've got geography to the left and art to the right. And then underneath that are two shelves of board books. And then we jump right over here to another bookshelf. And I've got Shakespeare up there on top and next to Shakespeare is philosophy. And this is kind of like philosophy and logic and I just really wasn't sure where to put all of it, but it's got like Plutarch and Plato and Aristotle. Moving down to the next shelf, I have Jewish nonfiction books and then we start to jump into history. And we continue with history down here for this shelf and this one before we come down to the very bottom, which is early readers. All right, so I did a ton of research as far as how to split up the books. And obviously my categories are what makes sense for our family. We have a lot of history books, we have a lot of science books, things like that. Those sections definitely made sense for us. And then as far as splitting up the fiction, that one was definitely a struggle. I didn't know whether to do that alphabetical, or what, like I really just wasn't sure. And the consensus that I seemed to find online was that doing it by time published was definitely the best way to go. Even when I started doing it, I really wasn't sure if that was the best thing, but once I really got going into it, I it's 100% the best way to go for us. I am definitely a fan and I would recommend sorting your fiction books this way. Absolutely, if you have fiction books 
of course, that are spanning over a lot of history like we do. I do want to note on the fiction books that I split them up by year published, not by year that like my particular book was published. So like the original publication date is what I went with. Now, if it was an abridged version of a book, then I would do it by the year that that abridged version was published and not by like, I have an abridged version of Black Beauty and I have actually the original text of Black Beauty. So like the original text of Black Beauty is in the time period that that was originally published and the abridged copy comes in a different section because it was published much later. Okay, let's talk about the computer system. I found a website and it's also an app called Library Thing. And I was able to literally use my phone and scan the barcodes on the back of all of my books and just input them into Library Thing in like my own little personal online library database. This is so amazing. I was able to create my own categories and tags as I wanted to. So I was able to put the categories that I used for my books onto library thing and input the books into the correct categories as I went scanning the barcodes. It was so incredibly easy, got the kids involved in this whole process. They loved scanning the books. It was so much fun. And the best part is now when I'm out at like a friends of the library sale and I see a book and I'm not sure if I have it or not yet, I can scan it and see if I do. And that is a huge help. Cause like before I had done all this, I literally like the week before bought the Tale of Two Cities and I already had the Tale of Two Cities. So for now we have two copies on the shelf, but I will most likely be putting one of those out into our neighborhood little free library soon. But anyways, it is really handy to on the go be able to look up a book and know whether or not I have it in our library already. Let me show you guys what library thing looks like here on the computer. Okay, so this is kind of like the landing page here when I get on to library thing and I can just click up here at the top. There's a section for my books and I can literally start scrolling through all of the books in our library. And you can see down here at the bottom, there's different pages. So I can go to all the different pages and I can also come over here to my collections and I've got all of my different categories. So for example, I can pull up my fiction from 1901 to 1960 and there are all of those books and I can see the covers and everything. Now there, if there wasn't a cover for a book, it looks like this. And let me see if I can change the cover on that. Yes, I can. So I can pick a cover that looks like the cover of my book, choose that cover, confirm it. And, and now that cover is going to show up instead. Now, if I wanted to edit this book for any reason, you can see I've got my collections here and I've gone ahead and tagged it. And then I've got all my collections here if I wanted to change its category. I really, really love the Library Thing app. It has been a total game changer for keeping track of our books. And if you wanted to keep track of your home library, if you're one who likes to shop library sales and thrift stores and used bookstores like I do, I totally recommend uploading your books on there. It was absolutely worth the time and effort that it took to get that done. Okay, so let's talk about checking out books. Yes, people in my community are checking out books. It's really more friends at this point. Once I finish totally setting up the library, I will open it up a little bit broader in my neighborhood. But for now, it's really just friends who are borrowing books. And okay, so the way that we're doing this, is I purchased these off of Amazon. So these are old school little library cards that have a space for me to put the author and the title, the due date and the borrower's name. And then these little pockets that it will go in and there's little peel and stick adhesive there to put that on the back. So like for Anne of Green Gables, for example, when you open it up, it's right there inside of the cover. You can see it's got the author's name and the title. And so what I'll do is I will keep this card and then they will take the book. I am keeping some index cards up here as well. And so I can put the due date on an index card for them. And while I keep this card, I can put a little index card with the due date just so they can kind of keep in mind, hey, it's been a few weeks. I need to bring this back and put that into that front pocket for them to take home with them. And then I have a little bin where I keep those cards that people have checked out. That bin is over here on our piano. And that way it's just kind of like right there and I've got their name and when the library book is due so I can follow up with them in a reasonable amount of time, a few weeks. 
And I do have little date stamps to make this easier for me. I do need to get an ink pad. That's the only thing that I am lacking in my library supplies box right now. Let me show you my library supplies box. All right, this is my library supply box. It does, in fact, have a lid. And so this I picked up from Ikea. As long as it's still in stock, I will list this down below as well. And what I keep in this box are just all of the library supplies that I might possibly need. All right, so I've got my cards and my pockets. I've got my little sticker protector, clear sticker protector things. I've got my date stamps. I keep a pair of scissors so that I can cut off like the excess of those long clear stickers. And then I have all of my various color sheets that I got for the different labels for the books. As far as how this whole thing is working out so far, I have to say it's working out incredibly amazing. I'm really thrilled that I'm able to loan out more books than I ever could before to friends and neighbors because I now have a system to keep track of it and I don't have to worry about forgetting where my books have gone and never seeing them again. And as far as the original purpose of the kids being able to reshelve books, I already said that is working out absolutely swimmingly. Cannot recommend color coding your books enough if you have small children in your home. We only put these books in this room into the library. We did not put, we have like, 1500 other books in our house. We did not put those into the library. Those are not books that we're lending out to other people. They're in other rooms. And yeah, it's really just these books. So we didn't include like every book in our home to go into this and that is okay. Okay, the final thing that I wanted to share with you guys today was processing a book. And yes, I did buy a book just for this occasion. Um, it's actually a book that we need for school next year for one of my kids, but I bought it early so that we could process it together and you could just see what happens when I get a new book in. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is open up the book to the page after the title page where you've got all this information about the book and I can look for that original copyright date. So this here says that the original copyright date here was in 1941 and that way I know which category of fiction that I wanna put this in. So I do know that this is a fiction book and it's from 1941. So that will go in my 1901 to 1960 category. Let's pop over to the computer. Okay, now because I'm using my phone to film, I'm not gonna be able to scan this book in. So I'm gonna show you how I add a book manually. So I just pop over here to add books and then I can just type in the title, The Saturdays. Do a quick search. This is the book. So I'll just click that right over there. It's added in. I forgot to update the collections there before I did it. So let's pop over here to my books and there is the book. So I'm just going to click on it. That's the same cover. So I don't need to update that or anything. I am going to edit the book though. It's not an early reader. So I'm going to unclick that show all 1901 to 1960. And then I'm going to add that as the tag as well. Anyways, that is all done. I can save that. There we are. There it is in my books. You can see I've got my tag there. The reason that I did the tags as well as the different categories is, is so that when I'm looking at all of my books, I can easily see the tags right here, the categories right here. All right, so that is it on the computer. Let's finish processing the book itself. Okay, so the color sticker that I need for this category is this kind of brownish color. So I'm just gonna pull off one of those and then attach that here down on the bottom of the spine. Make sure that is good on there. And then I'll grab one of these stickers. So you can see it's just like a very clear little sticker and then I'm gonna use that and put it over the sticker that I just added to the book. Okay, so now that's on there to protect the color sticker that I put. Okay, so my final step is to grab my little pocket and my card and fill out the information here and stick it all in the book.
Okay, now I'm gonna take the card and put it inside the envelope and then peel off the back. And there we go. And now this one is ready to go on the shelf. And it's as easy as that. Okay, a uh, note on opening up kind of to the somewhat general public here in our home library. Right now, it's just friends borrowing books. What I plan to open it up to is like my kind of immediate community of people that I know, whether through homeschool or through our synagogue, that sort of thing. So it's not like I'm just going to be inviting complete strangers into my home. It's going to be like that. I am not charging a membership fee at this time for the library. If I feel that that needs to be added later, that would be something that I will consider, but it would be very small. I'm not looking to make money off of this. It's really just like a kindness. I just love to share the books. I love the books. It's so much fun. There are a lot of other private libraries that are open for memberships and they have public open hours. And at this time, I'm not having specific open hours. I don't want this to become like a job. Just want it to be a fun thing. Could it grow into something more like that? I don't know, it's always possible in the future, but the current vision for this is to just allow people to come and borrow books that I know, even if I don't know them super well. <laughs> <laughs> but I need to have some sort of a connection to them. Again, I'm not just going to let strangers into my home. So that is how I am opening my library. And I would say we're currently in a soft launch. Right now, there are three books currently loaned out. And that's really just from people who've been to my house recently who have left with books. I have not officially announced to anybody that I am doing this, except that I've just told all of you guys. So if you're one of my friends and you're watching this, you're totally welcome to come over and borrow books. Uh, anyways, once the library is 100% set up, meaning all of the library books have the little pockets and cards in them, which currently they do not. I am still working on that. That is a lengthy process. And I'm, I'd say a solid third of the way through that process. And it's taken me a few days. So it will easily take me another couple of weeks to finish getting through the rest of the library as I kind of slowly come in here in my spare time haha, and work on that. So at that time, I will make an announcement. We have like a community chat and I will make the announcement there to invite the community. I have a homeschool chat. I will announce to my friends there so that if they wanted to, they could. So anyways, that is how I will be like kind of officially launching the library. Oh, that reminds me. I also got these super cool bookmarks so that whenever anybody checks out a book, I can give them this bookmark. And it's a reading list where you can write your books down and write them. And it's just so that everybody leaves with a bookmark because that encourages people to take care of the books a little bit better. If they have a bookmark to put in there instead of dog earring pages or laying them out flat and breaking the spines and things like that on tables or what have you. But for the most part, people have been so thoughtful and considerate and take very good care of things. So I'm really not concerned. I've been loaning out books for years to people, years and years, just because we've always had a lot of books and I love sharing them. So I kind of know how people generally are and they're awesome. Okay. All right, so that is just about everything I can think of to share here about our home library. If you have any questions, anything that I left out or anything you want me to expand upon, please let me know down in the comments below. I would absolutely love to answer any questions that you have that I can help you with, especially if you're planning to open up your own home library. Even if you don't have questions, drop me a comment down below and just let me know what you think about this whole thing. I would absolutely love to hear from you. Let's get that conversation going. And of course, don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed and please hit that subscribe button. I would absolutely love to see you here again. All right, and with that, we are all done for this video. I hope that you enjoyed and have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you in my next upload. If you have any questions, of course, please let me know down in the
So right now there are currently three, so, okay. Please subscribe to my channel. I share a lot here about our homeschool life, about Jewish life, and just kind of whatever, because hey, this is my life, my little corner of the internet, and you get this sort of thing. 